When I was a kid, I had a difficult time identifying as a woman. Well, as a girl and then as a woman as I got older. And it wasn't because I didn't feel like I should have been a woman or I wanted to be a guy. It was that I didn't feel like I fit into society's definition of who a woman should be. Growing up on TV, we had Leave It to Beaver reruns that were playing and we had June Cleaver and she walked around as a homemaker, pearls and a dress all the time. We then even had Charlie's Angels and they were tough but feminine. All of the things that they identified as a woman had to do with femininity, dressing a certain way, looking a certain way. And, and we deal with that today. Uh, what I discovered as I got older was I get to define what a woman is. It doesn't have to fit in anybody else's box, mold, or whatever. I get to be who I am. Welcome back to Food and Fems, the series where I tell you about a badass woman in history while I serve you some lunch. Today we're going to talk about Gladys Bentley, who was a badass woman who literally had zero you-know-whats to give. I can't say that on here. She was a blues singer who made her way up from Philadelphia into the New York scene and really hit it off. But not only was she a blues singer, she was also a really good cook. And she had a bar and she served her famous secret recipe, fried chicken. In fact, one time some guy comes in and says, my chicken is too greasy. So what did she do? She walked out, grabbed him by the collar, said, if you don't like my chicken, you can get the pluck out of here. I don't know if she really used pluck. I mean, from doing my research on Gladys, I think she didn't say pluck, but who knows? Anyway, I don't have Gladys's secret recipe for her fried chicken. And let's face it, even if I did, I wouldn't be able to cook it very well because I'm not a cook. What I do have is I have Popeye's chicken that you know I love. So I've got us some Popeye's fried chicken for lunch. So there you go. And like I said, what goes better with blues than a martini? I didn't make you one because I don't know if you can have one. Gladys Bentley was a total rule breaker. She was a lesbian and she was actually known for cross-dressing, dressing in men's clothing. This is in the 1920s when that kind of thing was really a no-no. In fact, there was a couple times where she was arrested just because she was wearing men's clothing. I mean, give me a break. But check out one of the outfits that she would often wear when she was singing or performing. Gladys even would sing songs about same-sex love, which like I said, being that it was in the 20s was a big no-no, but she didn't care. And she kept singing her songs and she actually became a huge sensation. Her powerful voice and unique songs made her a hit. She even got the nickname and became known as the Brown Bomber of Sophisticated Songs. I mean, I call myself Big Cher. That name puts me to shame. Gladys Bentley was born in Philadelphia in 1907, and she was the eldest of four children, so grew up in a family of six. The family was very musically inclined, and she was gifted a piano. Because she was so musically inclined, by the time she was a teenager, she was already performing in bars. We used to have to have fake IDs to get in bar. You can't even do that now. I mean, my mom would have been ticked off if I walked by a bar, but not Gladys. She's in the bar entertaining people and singing her songs. But then the 1920s come around and she's like, I'm out of here. So she headed out to New York City to make an impact on the music scene and boy did she ever. I'm not allowed to play too much of her music, so just listen real quick to this. Treat us women like you do. I don't want no man that I got to give my money to. That's it. That's all I could play. How could she not be a musical sensation? So Bentley starts singing in these rent parties and buffet flats. She then moved on to speakeasies and started performing all over Jungle Alley, which is a section of Harlem. OK Race Records even released eight singles of hers between 1928 and 1929. Eight singles in a year. Then in the following year, she had her own radio program. And then in 1930, Gladys decides to take her act on the road. And she performed in front of some pretty amazing people. Cole Porter, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. I mean, these are some pretty highbrow people that she's performing in front of. And remember, she's an out lesbian and she's dressing in men's clothing. 
So what that means is even though she was a total rock star and performing in front of some of these highbrow people, she was still getting a lot of discrimination. And as I said before, she was even getting arrested just because of the clothes that she was wearing. But did that stop her? Absolutely not. Even when she was made to marry a man in order to avoid some legal problems, she still refused to conform to society norms and she lived her life on her own terms. In fact, Bentley even claimed to not just marry her girlfriend, but her white girlfriend in a civil union in New Jersey. So by 1933, Gladys Bentley was performing all over in, and headlining big clubs like the Cotton Club and the Apollo. She even created her own musical review, which had a whole group of guys that were performing behind her in drag. And they were the primary attraction at a place called the Ubangi Club from 1934 to 1937. In Bentley's heyday, she owned a Park Avenue apartment. She had servants, she had drivers, everything that wealth could buy a person at that time, she had it. But here's the thing. Part of the reason that she was able to live her life, perform in these clubs and do things like that was because we were going through prohibition at the time. And so some of these clubs were kind of underground clubs anyway that were serving booze illegally and there was a lot of folks that were kind of traveling over to these clubs that weren't uh, maybe following all the rules so that they could have their drinks and so because they were breaking that rule anyway a lot of the other rules kind of were I don't know looked over or they kind of saw it as a cool thing to be doing anyway. So at the end of Prohibition, what happens is she's performing at this club called King Terrace. Somebody complained about the music that she was singing, that it was lewd or dirty or inappropriate, whatever, complained to the cops. Well, they show up and they arrest her. A couple days later, they end up chaining up the doors to this place. I mean, that's kind of some baloney, don't you think? So Bentley and her mom moves to Los Angeles and at the end of World War II, her success starts to go on the rise again because gay bars start popping up around the West Coast, which is when she opened up her bar called The Clam House. But unfortunately, January 18th of 1960, Gladys Bentley passed away due to pneumonia. She was only 52 years old. But her legacy sure lives on. She was a trailblazer and broke down barriers and paved the way for future artists in the LGBTQ community. And in fact, I wonder if I would be able to do what I'm doing now if it weren't for people like Gladys Bentley who paved the way for me. She also was a fierce advocate for civil rights and would often use her platform to speak out against racism and discrimination. In 1990, she was rightfully inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame. And in 2020, on her 110th birthday, Google even made a doodle of her, which I think is pretty cool. I hope you had as much fun hearing about Gladys as I had researching and telling her story. Like I said, I, as a member of the LGBTQ community, I would like to thank Gladys and everyone who came before me to pave the way and make me more comfortable, not just to be out as a lesbian, but really understand that, like I said, it is my definition of what a woman is for me to be able to identify it. I don't have to fit into anybody's stereotype or anything like that. I am a woman because I say I'm a woman. And that is why I like to live my life unapologetically and look up to women like Gladys Bentley, who showed me the way to do that. So the last thing I'm going to ask is that you like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you never miss an episode. And share this episode if you to someone you think who might enjoy uh, hearing stories about women in history. So until then, see you next Friday.